Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Mario Martinez, who is the CEO of Engresso. Hey, Mario. John, how's it going, buddy? Good, good. And you are, where are you up in Silicon Valley? Uh, well, I'm outside of Silicon Valley. I am technically in the San Francisco Bay Area, um, right. right outside of Walnut Creek. Excellent, excellent. An area I know well. I used to live there myself once upon a time. Um, so you are the CEO and founder of Ingresso, which is uh, focused on digital sales consultancy, right? And you are—that's what they tell me. Yeah, <laughs> and you are the <laughs> well, and you are the digital sales uh, evangelist. And what we wanted to talk to uh, to you about today was the idea of traditional selling versus digital selling. You know, modern buyers needing modern sellers. Like, is there is there really a division between traditional selling and digital selling, or is digital selling just traditional selling using digital tools? Yeah, oh, that's a great question. Um, it's actually yes. <laughs> yes to both. <laughs> yes to both. But but you know, look, look, if you think about this in terms of uh, today's modern buyer, mm -hmm. there's a couple things. And I'll, I'll answer your question. But if you think about today's modern buyer, there are four cardinal attributes that we know about today's modern buyer. Number one, they are digitally connected. Right? Mm -hmm. There's an average of 3.64 devices, connected devices. Excuse me, connected devices that we have worldwide across all people. Right. Number two, we know that they're socially engaged. And if you look at uh, just uh, in the U.S. alone, in 2008, 24% of the U.S. population had a social networking profile of some sort. But by the end of 2017, 81% of, uh, of the U.S. population had a social networking profile, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that included things like dating sites and whatnot. But if you think of the big six, you've got LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, and the, the wild one, which everybody forgets about but is actually the largest one, is YouTube. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and so you've got those six major platforms that people are engaging on. Well, then you've got the, the third cardinal attribute of today's modern buyer is they're mobile attached. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I say this, I say this oftentimes in my keynotes, uh, and I hope it's okay to say it here. Yeah. But, you know, look, the reality is, is we take these stinking phones just like this to the bathroom with us. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and, and how sad that is that that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that actually, actually is, um, a uh, uh, something that we've gotten used to doing. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, and then the fourth thing that we know is that they're video hungry. You mm -hmm. know, and 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 if anything that we 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 want to look up, we're going to go to YouTube. We want to look up the how to. But more importantly, we know that fifty nine percent of executives uh, are sharing at least a video weekly within the business organization. Right. So if you think about those particular qualities, um, you have to ask yourself: All right, if we're digitally, if if our buyers buyers and ourselves are digitally connected, socially engaged, mobile mm -hmm. attached, and video hungry, well, are we engaging with them as a digitally connected, socially engaged, mobile attached, video hungry buyer? Mm -hmm. And in the world of traditional selling, I would argue that when people leveraged basically email and cold calling or mm -hmm. a networking event, provided that you go to networking events, those are traditional base methodologies that quite frankly, they're not dead, but they've become extremely less effective. Right. Right. And so we have to engage with our buyers in the way that the buyers want us to engage with. And it makes our job as salespeople and sales leaders so much more complex. Mm -hmm. Why? Because not only do I have to figure out which platform I'm going to use from traditional selling, phone versus email, excuse me, phone versus email versus a, a networking event. But incorporate now all the digital mediums, texting, video, mm -hmm. digital referral, social network. Maybe there's a sales AI component, mm -hmm. right? And, and artificial intelligence sure. like an SDR bot of some sort. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and all those things I've got to think about now as a direct result of all the different mediums. So our job has gotten much more complex. Our buyers are demanding that we meet them where they are at. And in this world of traditional versus uh, digital, are we still going to leverage the old uh, traditional methodologies? Yes. The phone is not dead, mm -hmm. but it is dying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
and, and, and we do need to leverage those methodologies to be able to engage with buyers. Does that answer your question, John? No, it, it does. And there's a couple of interesting points just to pick up on. Um, there's two things. So let me deal with the first one first, right? There is always a danger, right, when um, now that we're so much more connected, and this has been an issue for a while now, is that uh, people start to take shortcuts, right? Instead of looking at how do I leverage these tools effectively, it's just like, ooh, I can get to you in so many different ways, so I'm just going to get to you, right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm just yeah. going to So when you talk to people, how do you how do you advise them to approach these different uh, these different media? So uh, here's what I suggest. I suggest always leverage digital to warm up the phone call. Right. Right. It, 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 think about it this way. If I were to, let's just say, follow you, John, on LinkedIn, right? You get a notification that this Mario Martinez character has now followed you, right? If I have a personal brand that maps to the buyer's uh, journey, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning um, it's not my, my personal LinkedIn profile is not about me being a quota crushing sales rep, right? By the way, buyers don't want to engage with quota crushing sales reps, mm -hmm. just so you know, right? <laughs> but, but if I have a way to be able to uh, trigger you coming to learn about me through my, uh, uh, through my personal mini company.com micro website, which is my LinkedIn profile as an example, then what I can do is, is I'm, I'm going to warm up an outreach especially if you and I have not engaged. How do I do that? Well, practical. What if I followed you first? It notifies you that Mario Martinez has followed you. You get a notification, you're like, wow, who is this Mario Martinez? Wow, I feel special. Somebody <laughs> wants to follow me, right? Okay. Now, the next day, I like something that you've published. Now, the next day after that, I comment on something you publish and I tag you on it, mm -hmm. right? And if I tag you on it, guess what else you get? A notification that, that Mario has tagged you, right? And by the way, uh, there is no spam filter that I know of that has blacklisted at LinkedIn.com coming into a, to a buyer's email address. Mm -hmm. So tagging is a very effective way to get into someone's email box because at LinkedIn.com, oh, I don't know, is one of the largest social media networking companies in the world, mm -hmm. just a small one, right? And the spam filters allow it to get through, right? So, so now I comment on something that you've published mm -hmm. or that you've engaged in. Uh, and now the next step might be uh, you've looked at my profile. I reach out to connect with you, right? Now, if I reach out to connect with you, my very next step is going to be I pick up the phone and I call you. Right. But I better make sure that I know you before I show you something. Yes. Because people want to know that you're interested in them before you become interesting to them. Right. Yeah. No, I, and, and that's a great point because I think, uh, as you've, I'm sure, experienced plenty of times, is that people try to shortcut this process and just try to get the connection and then hit you with, a, hey, do you want to buy this? And, and which, which just has the opposite effect because then puts them uh, down the bottom of the barrel and into the trash bin immediately. Oh, yeah. Well, think about it this way. If you're getting a crappy response mm -hmm. through your email, uh, through your email outreach, you're going to get a crappy response through your social outreach. Exactly. If you're getting a crappy response on your phone, on your phone messages, you're going to get a crappy response on a video message, right? There's a, so, so crap in <laughs> is still crap. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so, so let's not make crap. That's the, that's right. the point. And then yeah. that, and that's where we help for, for salespeople and for you know uh, individuals who are looking to produce revenue, we're teaching not only the, the tactical piece, but the art. There is an art, there is a science to actual digital engagement. And please do not send me a connection request that is not customized. Right. But did you know, John, that most salespeople don't even know how to personalize a connection request? Uh, I can believe that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so, so something as basic as that, that, you know, uh, if you're going to produce crap, it's still going to be crap, no matter what medium it is going to be. Yeah. And I think it's another interesting thing to pick up on. So, I mean, we, I, I agree completely. Like, the, you know, the phone's not dead. It still has a place. And so does face-to-face -face networking still has a place and going to conferences and doing all that good stuff and face-to-face -face meetings. However, uh, the fact is that they're not as prevalent as they once were, right? So here's a big challenge. And it's one that uh, we talk about internally a lot ourselves is that a lot of selling is now done, you know, through 
through Skype or through uh, GoToMeeting or one of these other online tools. And there are virtual. times, yeah, virtual. And there are times, a lot of times now, when you just don't see the other person, right? The other person may not have a video camera switched on, whatever. You don't see them. And you have to develop that kind of rapport and value production that you would have in a face to face environment. You've now got to do it in a virtual environment. And often you've got to do it blind. Yeah. So, Absolutely. so how do you do that? Because that's a huge challenge, and very few people um, are out there giving salespeople any advice on how to do that effectively. Absolutely. So, so first off, uh, you should never, ever, and I mean ever, <laughs> do a meeting that is just over the phone. In fact, every one of my calendar invitations that I send out for every single meeting, it's it says thirty minute video conference, mm -hmm. 45 minute, 60 minute, whatever the number is, doesn't matter, X minutes video conference. And you know what? The word video is in all caps, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, and the link is put into the meeting. And you'd be surprised over the number of sales reps that are still today joining um, uh, meetings and not turning on their video. Why? Well, they're uncomfortable. I feel ugly. I feel mm -hmm. fat. I've got a zit. I don't look good. My house is a mess. Well, you know what? Guess what? So was everybody else's house, <laughs> but you've got to be you because here's the reality. The reality is, is that if you went to a networking meeting, John, mm -hmm. answer, answer me this question. Would you walk into that networking meeting or an event, a conference, would you walk in with a bag over <laughs> your head? Um, not unless it was a bag sellers convention. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair, exactly. So, so the point is, is here's what we know about video, right? Mm -hmm. We know that there, there is actually a scientific, proven methodology behind the use of video mm -hmm. in face-to-face -face discussions, just like you and I are having sure. right now, right? The, the, the science behind video is the human voice conveys emotion. Mm -hmm. So that's the audible piece, right? I can hear that. Now, can I hear that just on an audio conference? Well, oftentimes you can. But now, map that to the fact that the science behind video and why video is so vital is that the brain is hardwired, hardwired, excuse me, to trust the human face. Right. So if you see voice and emotion, like those of you that are watching this video or listening through this, listening to only audio, you hear some of the passion and the excitement that's coming out through my voice, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. But now, Go to the video and watch the video and you're going to see my hand gestures and my facial expressions that map my emotion to my face. Yeah. And that's the connection that you want to, you, you want to create with your, with, your, with your buyers is to build the trust through your human face. Now, the third thing that we know about the science behind why video is so vital is that movement captures and keeps people's attention. Yep. Now, I could see you, and I could see that if you're looking down on your phone, mm -hmm. I can see that you may be typing. I can see that you maybe are looking at the squirrel running across the fence, <laughs> right? Fortunately, you're not doing any of those things. <laughs> but, but I can see those types sure. of things. If it's just an audio call, how many times have you heard this on the audio call? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Could you ask that question one more time? I don't think I understood. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's not that, that you didn't understood, Mr. M understand Mr. Buyer or Mrs. Buyer. What you, what you, what, what I really understand from that is that you weren't listening and you were multitasking. Exactly. Exactly. And so even if it's one way to your point earlier, even if it's one way as a sales rep, you better show up to your A game every single day, every single time. And you better turn on that video, even if it's one way. And I literally do multiple calls per week where it's just one way. Right. And I will literally tell a prospect or a buyer or a customer, hey, by the way, I, you know, I, I noticed that your video is not turned on. You're welcome to turn it on if you feel comfortable doing that. And they're like, oh, well, no, I'm in my house. I'm in my pajamas. And I'm like, that's okay. So am I. You want me to take my shirt off, right? So it, <laughs> and it, it creates a nice good laugh. Now, of course, I'm never going to take my shirt off, but it creates a nice <laughs> icebreaker, right? Sure. But I will be on video one way, 100% of the time, even if they don't turn on the video, because that I know is the differentiator between me and the competition is that I'm going to engage with video because of the reasons that I just gave you. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great point. And I think one that people should take away because it is becoming more and more of an issue. Um, this whole um, virtual selling, never getting in front of people and never being able to gauge your, and people gauge your cues and people coming off calls saying, well, I think it was a good call. I think yeah. they were following along. Uh, so um, w one other thing, Mario, to talk about. So there was obviously a lot of uh, 
there was a lot of talk about social selling and digital selling over the last you know 10 or so years and um, there's been a lot of uh, you know say hype around it or whatever and, and and people out there you know pushing one one point of view or another where do you think we are today in in, in the evolution of digital selling so in the evolution of digital selling is I think leaders are finally recognizing that without a doubt, it's here to stay. It's not going away. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, there, you're right. There was a lot of hype. A lot of my peers in the industry talked about the cold call is dead. And I think part of that was just to get the attention on sure. content. Um, a lot of them have, you know, truly believe that social selling was the, was the, the end all be all that's all garbage. And you're talking, you're talking to the, a, a digital sales evangelist, mm -hmm. right? Sure, yeah. <laughs> that's all garbage. <laughs> There's no one methodology that is going to be the magic bullet. What I do know is this, is that there, I can give you a bullet and one of the bullets that you can utilize is social. And in most cases, in most cases, I am actually leveraging all channels to engage with my particular um, buying community. So as an example, I may get a phone call, I'll talk over the phone, but I'll follow up with a LinkedIn connection message and with a video welcoming them to my network. Right. And then I'll turn around and after I get their phone number, I'll text them to confirm that we've got a, a an appointment or the date or the time or a reminder, whatever it might be, right? So I will begin leveraging all of those mediums and whichever one they are not replying to, I mark that in my CRM so I can understand, hey, you know what? John's not a texter, right? Mm -hmm. John really didn't like the texting. Or when I texted him and every time I text him, he turns around and he picks up the phone and calls me. Right. So what do I instantly figure out? Well, he's definitely a phone caller. Yeah. That's okay. I'll be his phone buddy, right? <laughs> uh, so, so, so these are the types of things. The other thing that I think um, uh, people need to understand and think about in terms of um, uh, digital is that uh, look, Sales Benchmark Index published a, um, a statistic last year, and it was eighty four percent of B two B decision makers start the buying process with the referral. Mm -hmm. Okay, without a doubt. If you, if someone is watching this video, does not believe that one of their decision makers is not picking up the phone and calling up one of their constituents in another organization up yeah. here to ask them what they are doing, you are sadly mistaken, right? Which is why the power of digital is so important because our objective is to bring people into our network. Because by the way, John, I don't know about you, but remember the old school Rolodex that you had the big spitting ball on your desk? Yeah, I know. I think I'm actually going to do a video on that because for all the younger people, because it gets referenced so often. And I know that there's younger people who go, what, Rolo, what? I don't even know if you could buy one <laughs> yeah, today, right? Yeah. You had like the, the cue cards where you stuffed uh, in a business card into the corners yes. and then it was like A, B, C, D and you index yeah, it that way. It's, it's gone. They're gone, right? Uh -huh. They're dead. And what is what has replaced it? Well, think of LinkedIn as your new digital Rolodex. That is your digital Rolodex. You have the ability to connect with somebody, see their email, see their phone number, and that is where you can now reach people through content sharing. So if they're not ready to buy today, they might be ready to buy tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? And through content, I literally um, got did a prospecting call today, and it was uh, um, an individual who was referred to me by the chief commercial officer of a company, uh -huh. all right? Let me tell you, take a wild guess at when the last time I spoke to this chief commercial officer. Just take a guess. I don't know, two years ago? Ah, very close. I connected with this in individual January 23rd, 2015. Okay? So, so this was three years ago. Three years ago. Haven't had a conversation uh, with, 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 uh, with any of these um, individuals. The last time I had a conversation, the last time, February 13th, 2016. Mm -hmm. So for two years and two months, this chief commercial officer has been watching what I am doing online. And lo and behold, the person that he assigned to reach out and consider how to launch a digital selling program, he said, here's my friend's phone number, my friend, my friend's phone number, he is the expert, call him up and see what we can do. Right. Right. If I was not digitally engaged, socially active uh, on, on these channels and was not publishing content, guess what? 
I would have been out of sight and out of mind. Does that make sense? No, that and that's a super a super example because I had a, a similar experience recently, but it was it was a little different. But um, it, you know, it was certainly with people referring and people coming out of the blue in the past and and looking for things, and it did actually remind me again, saying you know the power of the network, and then you because then you look and you say ah. Last time I talked to that person, I'm like, oh my goodness, has it been five years already? Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So in the last couple of moments we have here, uh, Mario, do you want to, are there any other pieces of advice you want to give our, our viewers and listeners about um, what they should be doing uh, to get more digitally engaged and get more savvy on how to digitally sell? Well, you know, I, I love to put a shameless plug in here no, for no, Big Wrestling. And I was about to give you that opportunity too. <laughs> so you can you can roll it into telling them about yourself and your company. Yeah, yeah. So so my background, you know, is I, I sat in the seat. Two years ago, I was the vice president of sales that launched a um, digital selling program. It was LinkedIn's most successful program up to that date because I had done two things. One, I had 100% rep adoption out of 120 U.S. domestic sellers. Wow. And two, we, we were the only organization to date that actually was able to have every single rep attribute a single opportunity to the sales pipeline. Mm. And as a direct result, LinkedIn asked me to speak at their annual users conference in 2015, October 2015. Um, so two and a half years ago, and the rest is history. Three months later, right? I ended up being you know, like, if brand equity was a straight line like this, it all of a sudden did like that. You know, speaking at one of the largest social media companies, and it was a 48 minute session at that. Wow. But but my my point is is that. Digital's here. Digital's is not going away, uh, and the 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 plethora of, of ways that we're going to connect with our buyers is 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 a multitude of things, uh, and it could be through text, it could be through email, it could be through uh, video, it could be through social, it could be through phone, it could be through whatever, right? There are many different ways. Our job is, as I said earlier, is much harder. We must figure out the way that your buyer, that mm -hmm. specific buyer, wants to engage with you. And we have to do that. Um, and for leaders that are not sold on this "quote unquote" playing on social thing, kind of reminds me of the days. You remember the the old days when we when we the internet first came out and companies started blocking web browsing. Yes. You remember that? Oh yeah. Yep. Because they didn't want your employees wasting time <laughs> on, on on the on the on this yeah. thing called the net, right? <laughs> well, where the heck are we at now, right? We, we can't even, like I said, we can't even go to the bathroom without getting on the net, right? Mm -hmm. so, so so for leaders who are listening in and leaders that watch this, you, you got a, a potential, if you do not figure out how to enhance the skill sets of your salespeople to leverage these channels and understand the methodology, you will end up like a company like Blockbuster, mm -hmm. Toys R Us, or yeah. Borders. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hands down. And you will become completely obsolete. Why? Because there were three things that we know that happened with those particular organizations. Those leaders, uh, excuse me, technology changed the game. Mm -hmm. Customers wanted to buy differently. Yeah. And leadership didn't adapt fast mm -hmm. enough. Exactly. So for all of us who are 40 and older, I'm in that category, mm -hmm. 21 years, right? 40 and older, don't be that leader that didn't adapt fast enough. Go to vingresso.com. We have um, a number of different programs, both private and public, and uh, that can help you with repairing your brand, attracting your targeted buyer or audience, and teaching you how to digitally engage. Yeah, I love it, Mario. And maybe one other message, and I would. This is just a public service announcement: is, you know, please, please stop, uh, people, please stop doing business calls in the bathrooms and airports. I just, I can't fathom how you can get away with that. <laughs> you know, it never surprises me. All of a sudden, I hear all of this. I, 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 this is my last keynote. I was last last week, and 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 you're in the bathroom, and you hear, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, John, uh huh, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm I'm here, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, go ahead and do that, and you're like. Um, hello. <laughs> uh, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. I'm right next to you. It just never surprises me how that, that, that takes place. Now, please do not make phone calls in the bathroom. <laughs> And then expect to land a deal that way. Yeah, it's uh, all right. Listen, Mario, this is great. Uh, Mario Martinez from Vangresso. I encourage you to check them out. Um, they've got a great lineup there at the company of, of digital selling experts. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. I will see you for another expert sales interview soon. Thank you. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.